And this explanation pretty much has two parts. The first part explains the actual process of getting the jewels. In fact, this is the same for every house, but it makes a point for this house. Four kindred stone, four natural powers, four stones in the house. And for every house, you get a jewel, which represents the knowledge that you gathered in order to obtain that jewel, the puzzle you solved. And by becoming, um, you become a jewel yourself in that you become clever, you expand your mind, and now you become an asset to their entire community. And the second part is the actual House of Krita, which is explaining that they're kind of the creators of the puzzles. They're the ones who, their their focus is mainly on creativity and invention, as uh, every house, of course, has concepts to it that are relevant to all the others because of the same underlying principle of knowledge is power or knowledge is important. But this one in particular focuses on creativity. At least that's what I understand. Anyway, we have a puzzle we have to solve. With only four more puzzles to go, we're in danger of finishing the game. However, the next upcoming puzzles probably give the biggest challenges of any of the ones we faced yet, as save for a few like the Peg Solitaire and the Assembly of the Planners. Here's one that requires putting horses together. Go here, we can go to the treasure chest. Something that tells me something cool is gonna be over here, given my track record of treasure chests. Oh, I think that might be the last piece. That missing fragment you have found with four more portions shall be merged. Only then may you return the Hasuna to harmony. Alright, looks like we are done here. So let's just go out to the trip. No, stop spinning around. Alright, appears that I'm going back this way. That is the most convoluted way of getting out of a little stable area that I've ever seen. All that's left is the treasure chest, and every dark chest of wonders I've encountered here has always had a puzzle in it and never something nice. Let's see what this one has. And it's a puzzle. Gee, I could never have guessed. It looks like I can play with these pieces. I can move them around. I can rotate them. And all these horses seem just totally messed up. The horses of Asva celebrated neither saddle nor stitch. And in their mazed world, now knows not which is which. As if by rain such horses can be drawn, but in their turn it is the horse that rides the Ratha. Alright, I have to guess that we have to get all the horses complete and with the same colors. So like right here we have a yellow head, yellow tail, red head, red tail, this ain't right. He needs a tail, not another hair, but that ain't right. That's the wrong color. Uh, oh, man. If I try to turn that, then I gotta turn that to fix that. Um, that's one still wrong down here. Wait a minute. Let's turn all these so they're all facing the same way. Where there's two heads in the left and in the upper area. Alright, so we got horses going all the way down and horses going all the way to the right. Oh, that head up there can't fit with any of those backs unless I rotate it. So, I'm going to have to either put it up here or rotate it. If I rotate it, I'll mess up all of this. But, like, 
Hmm. Wait a minute. I thought Rotate Line beat us. They're still going down, but now. Uh huh. By rotating all of them in that line, I've now got three horses going down. One set of horses going to the left now, while the other two are going to the right. So, we started by rotating all the pieces so that they're all facing down and right, which creates something that looks a little bit like this. All the horses are going down or all the horses are going to the right. But if we rotate any one of those pieces, it's going to mess us up. We have to rotate at least two more. And the way this works is that if we look up here, this represents one of the pieces. I colored one of them in yellow, the other one's blue, but it might be hard to see, but the basic idea is that when you rotate it, one of the arrows is going to become facing the other direction, and that means that if I rotated this piece here clockwise, as I, as I already did, I had to rotate these other two, which meant instead of down, 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 right, 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 you have down, 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 left, right, right. So what does this mean? Well, if we find a solution, if, we'll, if we can't find a solution for a particular rotation of the puzzle, we can choose a different one and then try to find a solution for that. Now, the easiest thing to find a solution for is the standard form because they all face in the same direction. You just have to move pieces around. You don't have to rotate anything. Whereas if you're using um, one where one of them is off facing another direction, that means when you move a piece into that, that row or that column, you're going to have to rotate it first and then rotate out the piece that you just took out. That will become a little bit more clear when I show it there. Cool. And another last point with rotations is that for every, rot every rotation of the puzzle, you've got three more that are practically identical or rather isomorphic with each other. That means that if I find a solution for Well, this kind of a form where basically that uh, the top part's facing left instead of right, it's the same as if all these down arrows were actually all to the right. And I'm just going to draw it big because it's probably hard to see. And instead, this one's facing down, and these were facing up. Basically, this wrote the whole thing rotated would look like this if you just rotated the arrows and if you keep going you would have rotations for all of them well the other one the, you know what I mean and the second step to this is that once I know that I want to pick a rotation and try to solve for that particular one I've got this to deal with now I've tried so many different ways to put all these numbers of colors of hands and tails together in some system of equations in order to try to find a way of solving the puzzle easily and I end up with I've spent over two weeks like this I can't make any progress gosh darn it fuck it didn't work out it just didn't work out so I'm sorry Instead, we have to do something like this. I noticed, first of all, the color blue stands out with me a lot more than the other two colors, as you can see. So, I decided that since there are, um, there's another thing with the blue color, and that's the fact that when you look at these counts, you realize that you can't have all the red tails connected to every red head, because there's only uh, three red heads and five red tails. Yeah, right. So that means that two of the tails aren't going to have a head to them. Poor things. With blue, you have the most number of things that have to be on the edge. Three of the heads have to be on the edge, and the rest can be if you want them to be connected to a tail. 
Additionally, there's also a piece where you have blue tail and blue head going across each other. And if you choose to take that piece and use it so that the, the tail is connected to a head and the head is connected to a tail, you end up having to color an entire row or an entire column. And constraints are good. This means that it's easier to approach the puzzle if you know for certain, certain things that have to be true. You're not just like playing around and trying to lucky guess everything. So with these two concepts in mind, I'm going to try to solve the puzzle in standard form. If I can, I'm going to pick what the, I'm going to pick, say, what I just did here at the top row. And I'm going to rotate it so that everybody's facing the other direction. And then I'm going to try to solve it. And so on and so forth until I get something nice. Ah, right, now we're back. So, from what we learned, our goal, let's put this back in the standard form, is to solve in one form. In this case, I'm going to try here. And just try to get all the colors right. And if I can't do it, then I'm going to go to another form. Alright, right now, what I'm thinking is that. Once again, with the blue tails, there's a lot of them, and uh, one of them can't fit any of the tails. It's kind of screwed up there. So I've got to keep that one at the top, somewhere at the top, while I try to fix this. I'm going to go with the yellows for now on the sides. And that means give me a yellow and red there, and oh. If I switch these, then I mess up the blue. So I'm at a situation where only one of them's off. I can't really do anything like this. What if I move these down? These, by the way, are what I said earlier. The head and tail blue so they can go two blue horses go run around in a row or in a column. So I'm just trying to mix things up here, see if I can get anything. And I can't seem to get anything. But at least I know that, that those through those two blue horses down there look like they are correct or a uh, set of pieces to be in the same way. So maybe I should try rotating. All right, so I'm gonna stick to this orientation now. Question is, what am I gonna do now? I can't. I still can't handle putting the back to one of those blue horses because I only have one rotation available. Look, that horse there, if I try to put it back there, I have to rotate this piece twice. But I can only rotate it once, not twice. Otherwise, it's not going to fit with the rotation that we need. So if I want that piece up there, it's going to have to be on that side. We have a set up with all yellows in the top, and there's two reds, two yellows. So if I put that um, down, I'm in the same position of predicament again. Well, right now I've got this horse split up, so let me put them back together so there's two blue horses running around. Anything I can do with this? Doesn't look like it. Once again, I'm having this. Yeah, this puzzle basically involves a lot of trial and error. You do want to approach it in a smart way, but it does require playing with it a little bit. Right there, I switched that out because I wanted to get uh, a railed horse at the top somewhere so I can have a little bit more freedom to move a different piece somewhere else. So instead of having forced to have three yellow heads at the middle, I can have a red head in the, in the middle. I hope that makes sense, and I can also move that, that one with the blue head up there because, well, less blue heads, the better. We don't have enough tails. Uh, I can't get, wait a minute. If I can't do it like this, maybe I can move everything down. Possibly. Because right now the two blue horses are in the middle. I can either push them up to the top or I can move them down and try something else. Let me just try moving them around a bit more here and see if I can swap some stuff out. Yeah. Now I'll just switch them. Alright, now, whoa! Now that was not expected.
But the pattern of thinking I used made sense. I started with the rotations. I couldn't find anything in standard form, so I rotated one of them. Then I tried solving, and basically I kept in mind the horses. I kept in mind, especially the blue horses, knowing that if it's impossible to satisfy one of the sides, especially with that blue head that seems off center from everybody else, he was real helpful because I knew he had to be on the edge somewhere, and I knew that those two blue horses liked to run around together. Uh, and well, I probably it seems most likely so you can use up all the tails. Taking those two together, it wasn't too difficult to solve this puzzle. That wasn't the only solution to the puzzle. Here's the solution we used. I also found another solution here. Same concepts, but ended up with just something different. And in fact, it uses the same rotation as the other one. Now here, now this is interesting. Here is a solution from the walkthrough. If you follow the walkthrough, you find that you get this. Now, you'll notice that this is isomorphic with respect to the same rotation we just used. The left side is all facing down while the right side is all facing up and all the horses are still facing to the right. Now you can rotate this and get another solution for the puzzle which is the same as the other one just everything rotated and it's in the same configuration as the solution we got which means there are three distinct solutions for that one configuration of rotation. And when I say rotation, I'm talking about the entire board, about which directions all the horses are going in for every row and column, I'm not talking about rotation of a single piece. And I just found that interesting. Anyway, we're done with this. Oh, okay, good. I don't know what happened, but my accent changed the moment we were there. Now that we're out, I feel better now. So let's go put this jewel in there and listen to what the oracle has to say. Tasks resolved so far marked here are 21. Who are these poets you desire to know? What place be this? For you are from afar. If all of us be seed upon this earth, then this city of Nisus be our bloom. No need for clusters of fortuitous jewels to beguile those eyes of distant concerns. The highest perfection is within these walls. No matter from where they fare, so long as every task we resolve, we welcome all and celebrate within the House of Hurrah.